Where would you rather live? This neighborhood or this one? Which one looks like it would be healthier to live? This neighborhood or this one? Where would you rather play outside with your kids or raise a family? Can you imagine what these different neighborhoods would look like in a large rain event or on a really hot summer day? Picture and imagine the difference between this neighborhood and this neighborhood. Where would you rather live? If you are listening, your answer to this question is probably that sec second photo here would be a much nicer place to live. This is the type of neighborhood we are looking to create to create more equitable, healthy, and climate resilient neighborhoods in Nashville. Welcome and thank you for listening to this recording today. My name is Meg Morgan. I am the campaign manager for the Root Nashville campaign at the Cumberland River Compact. Today, we are going to walk you through how to be a tree scout so that you can help us create neighborhoods that look more like this second image here. So in this next portion, uh, this is kind of the elevator pitch or information about the Root Nashville campaign. So if you want, you can listen to this part more than once because um, you can use this when you are talking to people as a tree scout. But this is the elevator pitch for why we do what we do and what we are all about. Nashville is losing trees as a city. We are losing trees to growth and development, and that is what has made our city what it is today. But we are losing thousands of trees in that process. We also have a mature tree canopy. Trees are old. Uh, they live a long time, but not forever. So we need to be replacing those old trees. We have storms and derechos and floods. We are losing trees in that way. And we also have a pesky little invasive beetle called the emerald ash borer, and it's uh, going to, here to kill all of our native ash trees, unfortunately. So we're losing trees for all of these different reasons. And yet trees are so important. They are critical for human health, our own health as people, and the health of our environment, especially for water quality. Of course, you can't really separate these things, our own health and the environmental health. They're really, really interconnected and intertwined. We absolutely need a healthy tree canopy for healthy water. We should really care about that because our drinking water comes from the Cumberland River. So because of the fact that we are losing trees and yet they are so important both for public health of people and for our environmental health, this is why the Root Nashville campaign exists. Root Nashville is a citywide effort to plant 500,000 trees in Nashville by 2050. It is set up as a campaign and as an initiative. Root Nashville is not a standalone organization. It's something that everybody can be a part of. It is an initiative that is led by the Cumberland River Compact, which is an environmental nonprofit. So that's where I work. We are the operational lead for the citywide Root Nashville campaign. And this is also in partnership with the city, especially with Metro Water Services, which is where the urban forestry hub of Nashville is located. So early in the campaign, um, we planted a lot on public property. Uh, we were in partnership with Metro. Um, they could get a lot of trees into a big area like a park or a school. And while we absolutely are going to continue to plant on public property, and as do many of our partners as well, especially Metro, we realized there was a huge need to plant trees on private property. The huge majority of land in Nashville is privately owned, way over 90%, 94% privately owned. So if we're going to try to plant 500,000 trees by 2050 in order to restore tree canopy, we need a strategy for planting trees on a private property. This is also important because this is where most of the tree loss is happening in Nashville. And we are also planting trees and focusing on private property because we need to get more people involved in this big goal. We're in the incredible position of having this goal be funded. Um, we have a nonprofit small grant program and we work with other partners to help us achieve this goal. The city is working towards the goal. We just need more people to be involved. And when we plant on private property, we can get homeowners and um, other advocates involved in the maintenance load for taking care of these trees as well. The Cumberland River Compact has a tree care program and we are watering trees on public property for the most part, some on private property. Um, but we really need to help spread this load and have other people accept trees and then agree to water them. And that is a lot easier to do on private property. So many of you uh, listening might be past or former current uh, neighborhood planting captains. So we just wanted to take a different a second to talk about the difference between the neighborhood trees versus community trees. We still are working with many neighborhood planting captains every planting season, about 50 every season. And as you may know, the planting captains are responsible for 
encouraging their neighbors to sign up for trees and bringing 60 trees to, in, to their neighborhood, hopefully. So that is what we consider neighborhood trees, trees to yards. This program with the tree scouts, we're looking at building sites for community trees. So these are still private property sites, but they are sites that can take hopefully at least 10 trees to one site. And this is somewhere like a church, a nonprofit, a business, apartment complex, areas like that. This is community trees. So this is where we need you as tree scouts. Last season uh, at the Cumberland River Compact, we planted at 65 different community trees sites. Again, this was places like churches and nonprofits, businesses, lots of HOAs and HOA common areas. But we're growing in order to meet this need of planting 500,000 trees by 2050. We are looking to increase the number of trees we're planting every season as a city. Last year, the Cumberland River Compact planted over 5,000 trees, and next season we are looking at planting 7,000. So this means we're going to need to ramp up our community trees sites. We're looking for about a double the number of sites, so 120 different sites that can accept 10 or more trees is what we're looking for next season. Through the Neighborhood Planting Captain Program, as many of you know, we have found that the grassroots peer-to-peer, neighbor-to-neighbor method is really what works. So this is why we need you. We are way more successful when we involve you and when you empower yourself and your neighborhood to sign up for trees. So what is being a tree scout all about? This is similar to the captain role in that you are helping spread the word to private property sites about the opportunity for free trees. You're approaching your local church or your local business and saying, hey, I live around the corner. Did you know that free trees are available? Here's some more information. I live here. I would love to see more trees planted in this area. So you're spreading the word. You're encouraging them to sign up. If you are comfortable doing so and as your schedule allows, maybe you're also checking back in with them and say, hey, you were seemed really interested in this tree opportunity, but I haven't seen you sign up yet. Do you have any questions? Can I help you get that application in? So checking back in on them, on their interest. And then we do ask that you help log your outreach. We're getting a lot of different scouts out there in the community, which we are super excited about. And we know it's going to help us give a, have us, a, have us give a successful planting season um, this next year. Uh, but we want to keep track of what everybody is doing so that we don't accidentally reach out to the same place twice or step into each other's territories or areas. So we're going to ask that you help log your outreach. So what are the different type of sites Tree Scouts can reach out to? Any private property. So this is places of worship, churches, synagogues, mosques, daycare centers. Those are privately owned nonprofits, campuses, not public ones though, private, apartment complexes, HOA common areas, businesses, and large yards are uh, eligible for this program. If a yard can fit more than 10 trees and they can manage and water them, um, they are absolutely eligible for this. So even though the Neighborhood Planting Captain program is the one that is focused on yards the most, large yards can also apply through this program. So let's do a pop quiz here to think about public versus private property. Because Tree Scouts, we're really asking for your help on the private property side of things. So what about this church? Glendale United Methodist Church. This is one of our seasoned scouts um, in this photo here who helped plant a bunch of trees in this property. This is private property. Hadley Park Community Center, Metro owned. So this is public property. There are opportunities to plant trees on public property, but it is not through the Tree Scout program. Street trees, this is a little bit of a trickier one. Those trees that are planted in that green strip between the sidewalk and the road, this is public property. That's called the public right of way, and that is technically Metro owned property. What about if there isn't a sidewalk and you've got trees in that first six to 10 feet or so of what feels like your yard from the street, this is also public property. Even if you don't have a sidewalk, there's still a public right of way, and that's about the first six feet or so of property. Deeper into the yards, of course, this is private property. What about a different kind of school, a religious school or otherwise non-MNPS? This is also private property. So any of the private property sites, this one included, would be eligible to be signed up for trees through the private property program. 
If you're not sure, there is a way to find out though, whether it is public or private property. And that is by checking out Parcel Viewer. The link is at the top here, but if you Google Nashville Parcel Viewer, you can also get there this way. If you click the magnifying glass in the upper right, you can type in an address and it will um, show you the ownership information on the left-hand side of that page. So let's get going, let's get started. So how does this process work? We are sharing the kind of ins and outs of what will happen when sites apply for trees. The only part that the tree scouts are really responsible for and that we're asking your help with is this first part. And that's really guiding them towards the application and encouraging sites to sign up for the trees. The rest of this process is just so you know how to answer their questions um, when you have them, when you're out and about in the community. So how does it work? The scouts help guide the sites to the application online and that's rootnashville.org slash private property. That page has information about the program. There's a link to the tree species catalog um, and it has the actual application link there also. Um, what happens next after that? Again, this is just so you can tell the sites how it works. Um, once the site applies for trees, uh, someone on our team will then respond to those applications and we'll schedule a site visit. Multiple people can be there at the site visit. Anyone who has a uh, stake or a say in um, where the trees should go is welcome to be there. We'll schedule that site visit during the day. It can also be early morning or evening um, after kind of normal nine to five hours um, if need be. So once we get out there, we see the site, we talk about how the space is used, where the site might like to see trees and we'll give recommendations. And then after that site visit, the Root Nashville team will create a draft planting plan and we will then send it to the site and say, hey, how does this look so far? Do we need to make any changes? Do you have any questions? It's very much meant to be a conversation and a collaboration. Um, it doesn't need to be set in stone until the order is finalized. So we're happy to make changes to that planting draft and to that plan. But then once it's approved by the site and signed off by anyone who might need to sign off on it. So for a church, for example, maybe the pastor needs to sign off on it. For an HOA common area, maybe we need to wait until the next board meeting and have the board approve it. But once that plan is locked in and approved, we will order those trees from the nursery. We meaning the Root Nashville team. We'll get those trees in, we'll lock them in, and then we will send a commitment to plant and care form to the site. Um, I tell people this is not something that you need a lawyer for. Um, this is just to get more information about how the, how the site will plant the trees and keep them watered and maintained. And then our team, the Root Nashville team, will deliver those trees straight to the site during the planting season. Planting season is in the fall and winter, so that would be mid-October through the end of March, sometime in that time frame. Through this process of finalizing the trees, uh, we will kind of create our delivery map of where we're going to be over the planting season, and at least a month, if not two months, before the delivery, we will reach out to the site and say, hey, this is when we're going to be in, the, in your area. Will this delivery work for you? And we'll work with the site to set that delivery time. So how might this look or sound? I'll give you a second to read this. It can be as simple as this. It's just saying that you're a volunteer. You don't even really have to name names. You can say environmental nonprofit, keep things simple. Say that we're looking for planting sites. We need more places to sign up for these large free trees. Can I share some information with you about this program? If at all possible, if you know or have connections to sites in your neighborhood, we have really found that this is much more successful than maybe doing the cold call or walking in when you don't know someone. But of course, um, there will probably have to be some of that as well. But we do say whenever possible, go personal. Maybe if you know someone who uh, frequents a local business, um, they could help make you the introduction to that business owner and then you could make the pitch from there. Um, if it is a, again, a church, if you know someone who maybe goes to that church, maybe they can help make that soft handoff for you. Um, we have found that to be typically more successful whenever possible. So from there, you're likely to get a series of different kinds of questions about how the process works and what's available. And typically one of the very first ones is, well, what kind of trees do you have? Here's kind of a stock answer that you are free to use. Anything in quotes, we say you can just copy and paste this into your own outreach as much as you would like or as much fits the situation. But you can say, great question. There are seven different options to choose from, some that will grow large and others that are smaller. 
They are all native hardy species that grow well just about anywhere in Nashville. And again, you can say the Root Nashville team will give recommendations, but we're also open to how you use the space and what you would like to see. But th those are the basics. Seven different trees to choose from, some big, some small. They're all hardy, they're crowd pleasers, that's why we pick them, and they'll do well just about anywhere. We will equip you uh, with a binder of information as a tree scout, and that will include the tree species catalog. Uh, we often really refer to the cover of the catalog, so we can just kind of take in all at once all the different tree options that are available. But each tree species that we offer also has its own page, and that answers questions like where to plant it, whether it wants full sun or not, how big it gets, and some kind of additional information about that tree. So we tell people all the time that you do not need to be a tree expert, just enthusiastic. You don't need to know how tall or details about any of these trees in order to encourage sites to sign up for them. We'll help out with that part. Here's another commonly asked question. Who plants the trees? Like, sure, I'm interested, but do we need to plant them as our, at our church or does our HOA need to plant them? Here's kind of your answer to that as a tree scout. It helps when sites are able to plant their own trees and the Cumberland River Compact can provide resources. But if that's a deal breaker, you can be plugged into one of our big citywide volunteer planting days. So we are a small team. We get a lot done with our small but mighty team. So that's why as much as possible, we encourage sites to plant their own trees and we can provide shovels, we can provide video resources and how-to guides, maybe even be present on volunteer day, depending on uh, when that date falls. But we don't want that to be a barrier. So if it is maybe, um, I don't know, a congregation of older people at a church and they're not sure about the physical labor or they don't have the tools or whatever it might be, we can plug in a site to a uh, one of those big volunteer planting days. This is a little bit of a site by site site by site basis. All right. Next, most importantly, who waters the trees? This is another one where it does kind of depend on site by site, but it's a similar situation. We really encourage sites as much as possible to handle the watering of their own trees. We send weekly reminders to anyone who signs up for trees for from us about when to water trees over the summer and when you don't need to water the trees when we've received enough rain. So here's the kind of stock general answer to this question of who waters the trees. Newly planted trees need to be watered once a week during the first two summers after they're planted. Sites are responsible for watering unless you're interested in lots of trees. Then the Cumberland River Compact might be able to water your trees too. So we have a very high demand for our tree care program. So we really want it to be even at least 30 trees, maybe even 50 um, to kind of unlock that free watering. So if there is a site that can take on a lot of trees, that would be a lot for a site to water on their own. So it is more likely that we would be able to water them. But this is something we can go on a case by case basis. And if you're hearing this from a site that they need help, let us know and we will let you know if we can plug them into our tree watering program or if uh, we are not able to do so at this time. So we are gonna ask that the scouts log your outreach and we have a spreadsheet that we will share that is common open source and you will add your information to this um, spreadsheet to say, all right, I'm in sub area of Madison, that's sub area four, let's say, here are the three sites I reached out to you know, this week and some notes about that. Um, this is just so we know what places have already been reached out to. And so we don't accidentally maybe reach out to them again in a few weeks or so. Um, and also so we don't accidentally duplicate any efforts. So I wanted to share a couple tips from you from a couple of, uh, from a seasoned scout who started as a neighborhood planting captain and then kind of um, helped us invent and craft this program of the tree scouts. So this is the wonderful Ingrid Campbell who lives in the McFerrin Park neighborhood. And she shared a couple tips that really worked for her in order to get people to sign up for trees and encourage sites to sign up. Over COVID, she says this first point um, was really a period of a lot of hectic activity. We were home a lot more than ever before, really wanted to create a sense of peace in our home. Trees can do that, she says. Trees can help create a sanctuary. They can help with your mental health and um, really just give you that peace of mind, even just by looking out the window. So she says that was something that helped her encourage sites to sign up, was really uh, underlining this idea of trees being peaceful and creating sanctuary at your home spaces and around you. 
if you hear from a site, Ingrid said, and they are worried about storm damage, there's a pretty easy way you can kind of redirect that or um, still, you know, kind of hopefully soothe those worries or those fears. And that is, well, you could look at smaller trees. You don't have to get anything too big. And another tip here is actually, if you plant a couple trees, they're gonna be stronger because they're gonna connect underground through their roots, help hold each other, literally be rooted into the ground. So it might seem counterintuitive, but one thing you can do if you're worried about storm damage, is actually instead of planting one tree, plant a couple trees. Um, again, with COVID um, over the past few years, Ingrid shared that a lot of people lost loved ones through, through the pandemic. Um, so maybe they might want to plant a tree as a memorial to someone. Uh, tree planting, Ingrid shared, also really helps build community. So you can have events um, with the site. You can encourage them to maybe do a block party or to help get a group of volunteers out to get the trees planted. But it really also builds community. All right, this is uh, Ryan Bell. He was another neighborhood planting captain who kind of really on his own started this scouting and got out there to businesses in his area of Radnor, which is in South Nashville. Uh, he really found that persistence was helpful. Yes, it's good to reach out to the site, but they might need a follow-up or a nudge in order to actually go through with the application. Ryan used his perspective as a neighbor and saying, hey, I live nearby. I walk my neighbor, I walk my dog, or, um, you know, my family walks this street often. We would really love to see trees planted in the front of your business. It would really create a more welcome area for our neighborhood. So really leaning into that perspective as someone who lives nearby. Another thing Ryan did was starting virtual. So he researched some sites in his neighborhood that he really would like to see trees planted, found some emails and sent some information ahead of time, sent some links and some uh, information about the program and then followed up after sending that email by visiting in person. And so they said, oh yeah, I remember you, you sent that email, um, that, that was interesting. So that was just one strategy that really worked for him. And that is just about it. Really the Tree Scout program, we will um, equip you with materials and flyers to help you do your outreach, but you're just out there and you are encouraging sites and telling them that there are large free trees available. The binder will include some nice visuals that we found really help people um, kind of picture the process and how it works and also how big the trees are, because that is something that is people are always surprised by is how big the free trees are that we give away. So we'll have some size comparison photos in that binder. We'll have the tree species catalog. We'll have the flyers that have the link about how to apply. Um, and we'll package that all up for you in a, in a binder that you can take with you in your outreach. So ask us any questions you have about the process and uh, arrange a time to come pick up your binder with us. And then let us know what your focus area is. Is it going to be your neighborhood or your surrounding sub area? Do you want to focus on a certain type of site? Let us know and we will give you the okay on that. Um, and or if there's someone who is op also operating nearby, we'll just make sure that you're coordinating your efforts. We also ask that you please log your outreach um, and we will share that spreadsheet with you once you have confirmed that you've watched this and um, we've answered any questions that you might have. And we would love to know how it's going. Um, send us some selfies. We love some field selfies of our tree scouts out there doing their outreach. Wear your Root Nashville t-shirt. We will get you that when you pick up your binder. Um, and just let us know how it's going because we really can learn and adapt to the program based on your experience. And again, just lastly, to just leave you with these visuals here, thank you for helping us transform neighborhoods that hopefully don't look quite as bad as this, but some areas might into areas that look more like this to, again, create more equitable, healthy, and climate resilient neighborhoods. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time. And thank you so much. We are excited to work with you.